to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in the Fantasy Footballers Podcast back with you Wednesday, November 18th. It's another day in the neighborhood. How Just you guys another doing? Day. Just another day. <laughs> I'm doing great, man. I've been I've been commissioning for pantless shows for a while and <laughs> I got it. Well, yeah, we are remote today, but that's okay. The quality doesn't suffer. We got Al Borland. We got Judge Giamatti. They're turning the dials, pulling the levers. We've got a, a busy show today. We got Thursday night preview. We got some mailbag we want to get into. We got news and notes to talk about. Buy, sell. And, um, you know, I, I've got a long day of rewatching the DeAndre Hopkins catch. I mean, I, every day I have scheduled now two to three hours of rewatching that highlight. You've blocked it out. I've blocked it out. Yeah. So, we call that uh, therapy time. I'm going, <laughs> I'm going to the therapist, wife. It, what's funny is you, you have this year now of, um, I don't know if you guys are, it's been a little bit of a disruption this past calendar year. Mm-hmm, I've heard about it. And uh, the brightest moments are all brought to you by DeAndre Hopkins. I mean, I remember back in, <laughs> back in April when the trade happened, I was, uh, you know, we it was a good day. It was a really good day. But uh, you can check out the show on the web, thefantasyfootballers.com, all the rankings, the start, sit tool, uh, the player profiles, team profiles will be up there pretty soon, and a lot of premium tools for the Foot Clan supporters over at jointhefoot.com, where you get the bonus weekly episode as well. We have the Megalodon show in one week, Mr. Moore. Why are you why are you a Santa shark? <laughs> well, well, he was I doing mean, the tis, transition. You've never uh, heard him transition into the Megalodon. Not that was through Santa Claus voice. Well, that's because it's, you know, it's not usually the holiday season, but right now the ho- look, for the, the Megalodon Christmas, show that's scheduled every single Thanksgiving time. This year Christmas <laughs> came early. Because it needed to. Christmas right. lights are up. Tree is up. Decorations are up. We're good to go. Yeah, that was his full moon werewolf transformation moment, and you got to hear it. You got to hear it live. Uh, but the Megalodon episode next week, next Wednesday, ahead of the holiday. Let's do some buy sell. Buy or sell, presented by Pristine Auction. Oh, three strikes, you're out, Andy. My goodness. Oh, I, man. I whiffed on all three by sells last week. What a loser. Yeah, you can't win if you don't play. I gave James Conner too much credit. I thought he'd be a top 15 running back. I, I thought Carson Wentz would be a top 10 quarterback. And we thought Tyler Lockett could be top 15. Wow. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, Jason, you got two for three last week. Yeah, it was, a, it was a good week. I'm glad oh, I... I didn't participate last yeah, week. Yeah, that's, that's what I was that. saying. Oh, you can't, you can't win, if you, win if you don't play. I hear, I hear you now. I, <laughs> I I saw three X's. I figured you were leaning in on me failing. So No, no, you you were gone. and uh, I would have gotten these, obviously. I wasn't going to correct you. I was I was just going to yeah. let you live in those losses. Um, I'm sorry to see that you remember you weren't here last week. I don't remember much. Uh, will they finish... Uh, this, is, this is the theme that Judge Giamatti set up for our buy-sell. Ooh, uh, nice. Will these players finish in the top 11 in week 11? So uh, It's my favorite number. Wonderful. Mike Davis, a top 11 running back <sighs> at Detroit. Oh, juicy. He was top 11 in weeks 3, 4, and 5. He's lost some juice, though. What do you think? Yeah, when you lose juice, the Detroit Lions have an, an ability uh, the, an overabundance of yeah. juice for you to soak up in the running game. The matchup is so fantastic. I, unfortunately, I'm going to sell just based off of what we have seen from Mike Davis in the last few weeks. We aren't sure yet if Teddy Bridgewater is going to be the quarterback for the Carolina Panthers. Uh, he's supposed to give it a go today at practice, but that remains to be seen. If it's not, Teddy will have P.J. Walker from the XFL, uh, XFL superstar, but I, I unfortunately have to sell, and I I love Mike Davis. I've got Mike Davis in a lot of places, so this this hurts my feelings. I yep. I'll, I'll buy it. 
I think he'll be top 11 this week. Detroit, most fantasy points given up to running backs over the past six weeks. I'm in on Mike Davis this week. Yeah, he hasn't done it in the last five weeks, but if you really look at those last five weeks, you've got Chicago, which is a great defense, New Orleans, which is a great run defense, Tampa Bay, which is a great run defense, and then Christian McCaffrey was there for one of the other games, and he was a backup. So I, I, you know, I think he's lost a little bit of juice, but against Detroit, I'm going to buy. All right, what about Michael Thomas? Michael Thomas, top 11 Oof. wide receiver against Atlanta. Juiceless. And without Drew Brees, last two weeks, uh, you know, the high draft capital investment, you spin up on Michael Thomas, first round guarantee, right? Finally yeah. get him back, and he's wide receiver 56 and wide receiver 71, 13 targets, 7 for 78 across well, both games. Don't forget when week one when he was the wide receiver 83. Well, they, thank you for that reminder, Mike, and the, the but, knife knife twist to those who Mike, drafted him. He yes. got injured in that game. He did, but he also played more snaps in week one than he has the last two weeks. <laughs> yeah, he played the whole game, got injured at the very end. I, I'll sell it. I don't like Michael Thomas without Drew Brees, and he hasn't shown it this year so far. So, uh, no, I'm not going to – I'm not buying that. I'm going to buy based on history. History of Michael Thomas being absolutely dominant. History of Jameis Winston throwing picks, throwing pick sixes, throwing a lot of yards. Uh, I was going to say picks and pick sixes are the uh, – that's in the win column for your Michael Thomas prediction, huh? That is absolutely in the win column. It's the yeah. same reason why Chris Godwin and Mike Evans were always great fantasy options. It's why Jameis was able to lead the league in yardage last year because they have to come back, and I think they're going to need to throw the ball if he turns it over. And I'm I'm buying Michael Thomas top eleven. What's weird is I mean the the Atlanta Falcons that was the matchup you know for the first six weeks of the season that you were targeting. Then they removed Dan Quinn from his head coaching duties. Defensive had, minded, yes. superstar coach. Defensive. So the team, the team of course gets better on defense. Uh, but you had two weeks then where things looked a little bit better for the Atlanta Falcons before superstar fourth quarter hero drew Locke came in and garbage timed his way so, uh, so i'm i'm saying this because I, I mean i don't know i don't know if that was the uh as i don't know if that was finding a crack in the armor against the atlanta falcons uh so that was called but, prevent defense mike yeah. yeah that was called pre look if you think that atlanta is going to be playing prevent because they got a big lead over the saints you might have uh another thing coming well that's the well the, i mean that is kind of the atlanta falcons way this year is get a big lead and then give up a bunch of points but even garbage time turning into 47 points for the wide receiver position against denver i'm gonna buy it i trust in i trust enough in Jameis winston to get it done for michael thomas all right, Tom Brady, top 11 quarterback against the Rams on Monday Night Football. We've talked a lot this week about the Rams, their defense, deserving the respect, uh, at the same respect as Pittsburgh or Baltimore, some of the uh, higher-profile defenses this year. But Tom Brady, it, you know, when you look at that team, it, it has a ton of weapons. You know, when you have Godwin and Evans and Antonio Brown and Gronkowski to throw the ball to, you know, Jalen Ramsey can't, defend all four of those guys and so there there's an opportunity here for Brady but uh he'll be blitzed Aaron Donald and company I'm gonna let you guys go first on this one oh, this is so tough I want to absolutely slam the no button uh, that he won't that he will not be if you just look at what the what the Rams have done against opposing quarterbacks they have just completely shut them out here's their their fantasy points over the last uh six games 12 12 34 fantastic at uh, nine. 9-12. I mean, they've given up one game over 12 fantasy points, and that was Russell Wilson, you know, last week. It wasn't some scrub. But then, if you look at the game log, you're like, okay, well, that was the Giants. Yep. Uh, that was the Washington football team, the Bears, the Dolphins. These aren't great quarterbacks. So, you're here, you know, and I'm I'm going to sell. I, I, I think I think 11 is too high. But you're Brady. not going to slam the button. You're going to softly push the sell. I'm 100%. <laughs> well, no one is looking. I will reach yeah. my hand in and sell. Yes. I'm going to sell. The The Los Angeles Rams currently averaging the second most sacks per game. That's how you beat Tom Brady. The old was, man does not like to get hit. He gets frazzled. He tilts just like the rest of us. So I'm going to sell. That was really what did push me to that is the offensive line problems that they had two weeks ago against the Saints. 
eh, they better solve some things because Aaron Donald is not, uh, you know, he's he's not a, a weakling on the other no, side of that ball. It, look, maybe it's recency bias, but solves some things is what Brady does. I'm going to buy it this week. I think he takes care of it on Monday Night Football. And uh, you saw Antonio Brown more involved last week, and, and there's a lot of weapons. So I think it'll be a primetime Tom Brady. I think we're ready to go there. So I'll buy it. We'll see how that turns out. That was buy it, or sell. Or did you have something to add, Mike? I, uh, I was just going to say it was primetime Tom Brady against the Saints. Hey, we'll see what happens. Uh, <laughs> buy or sell from Pristine Auction. PristineAuction.com. Use the code BALLERS to get a $10 credit. Time for news. News and notes from around the league. All right, let's talk about Matthew Stafford. He has a partial tear in his throwing hand thumb. He's going to practice this week to test it out. Expected to suit up. I would bet just about everything based on this information that one of the toughest players in football, Matthew Stafford, suits up for the game. He yeah, also he's... played in that game after he was hurt and was productive. He really is tough. I mean, after you know coming into the his NFL career, being labeled as an injury prone player, he's played through some. He's played through a broken back at times. So, um, yeah, I don't think the thumb's going to stop him from playing. But will it stop him from playing well? Is is the bigger problem? We've seen. I mean, like it. It took Gardner out. If you guys remember the the fantasy playoffs last year, when Jameis Winston was like the 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 guy for fantasy, uh, he was playing with a thumb problem, and I I don't know if it was a tear. I think it might have been a partially broken thumb. But like we saw games for Jameis where he was great, and then you saw where oh the thumb has taken over, and this guy has no control whatsoever, it, even less than Jameis Winston usually has. So are you? That's that's are fair. You still, are you willing to play Stafford? I mean, he's Stafford's in a good spot this week. He's also been on a roll. I mean, he's had some some yes. top ten finishes recently. I think I'm fine with it. I'm not gonna. All right. Uh, I get it though. I mean, you have a lot. If you have other options and you're worried about. Uh, mid-game injury you're worried about the thumb hurting productivity and no Kenny G if he's not out there I get it but he's it's just ironic he's had some productive games without Kenny Galladay yeah I, I would probably look to pivot just because it's Carolina's you know easy to beat on the ground that's where the Lions I think still want to uh, to have their offense focused and with no Kenny G in the thumb I, I, I would look elsewhere all right, uh, Drew Locke is hurt again. Pretty severe strain, bruising, uh, week to week, uncertain for this week. Okay, I mean, I'd skip it if I'm playing the Dolphins and I'm Drew Locke too. So I it, probably not a lot of fantasy implications, but maybe if you're the you know Jerry Judy manager, are you concerned about a backup? I, I don't know. It feels kind of neutral. Even, I'm not even sure that, that that's a downgrade. Um, oh, oh, oh. I, I mean, uh, Drew Locke Shots is shown. fired. Just nothing special outside of two fourth quarters where he's come back need, and prevent D. We need a vendetta button. Like oh, if something yes. if something pops up and it's like because I can feel it, like I can feel it coming through uh, the microphone, Jason. You just Drew Lock failing would be like uh, very enjoyable to you. <laughs> he's he is all right. Should I say uh, continuing to fail? <laughs> Right. Uh, he's, I believe, and I, I don't know. I didn't, vet, I didn't vet this, but I believe he's the second cousin of Philip Rivers. So, um, okay. yeah, those two guys are vendetta. in my vendetta club. <laughs> so because Philip Rivers is now having a very good year and winning, you have to take everything out on Drew Locke. It's he's shifted not, he's to down. Drew Locke. <laughs> well, the real crux of this argument, Jason, is you need to, you need to play Drew Locke. That's how you'd get this the full vendetta mode. I mean, you played Philip Rivers. That's where this came from. No, nope, never, no? never gonna, ha never gonna happen. <laughs> I, I learned my lesson by playing Philip Rivers. Also, Philip Rivers is not having a great year. Philip Rivers, he's is, having a pretty good year. He's had two quarterback one weeks on Whoa, the year. Okay, I'm are we not talking, talking fantasy, just for fantasy or NFL? Oh, I thought. No, I'm sorry. I'm I was just NFL. talking. I was just talking fantasy as a fantasy show. I want you to say these words out loud. Playoff okay. quarterback Philip Rivers. A yeah. playoff uh, NFL playoff quarterback Philip Rivers. I got no problem with that. <laughs> Not fantasy playoff Not quarterback. Not fantasy playoff quarterback Philip Rivers. Yeah. He's been a nice uh addition in terms of that defense has taken the steps forward to Forrest Buckner and then Philip slides right in there. It's it's been good. All right, we'll we'll update you on some Seahawks players momentarily when we do our Thursday night preview. Uh, Alan Lazard, Mike, officially activated this off is of exciting. IR. This is exciting stuff. The Lazard King, 
He in fact tweeted a he tweeted out a an emoji of a lizard and time. <laughs> so he is all in on lizard time. I love it. Wow, that's and like this is to me. Devonte Adams is fine. He, like I'm not taking anything away. That was the most but, insulting thing you've ever said about Devonte Adams. Actually, yeah, it's I, not. I, I apologize, but what I'm saying is, oh yeah, no, Devonte Adams. If you remember those first couple <laughs> years in the league, he was bad. He was bad at football, and now he's one of the best. But my point was, Alan Lazard is back. Alan Lazard was playing great those first three weeks. Aaron Rodgers has already been crushing, just crushing for fantasy football, and now he has a legitimate wide receiver too back, and Marquez doesn't have to be counted on. It's, this is a, To me, this is a big upgrade for Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, more stability for him. Yeah. And then uh, Raheem Mostert should be able to return in Week 12 against the Rams. So that is good news, according to Kyle Shanahan, good expecting news. him back. Yeah. And for fantasy players who uh, enjoyed a few weeks of, of the fastest player in the game and then haven't mm -hmm. got to enjoy that for a while. A reminder, today was waiver day, so make sure you drop it like it's hot. Drop it like it's hot. See who was dropped in your league. Uh, our waivers will go through here in a little bit, and we'll have, to, we'll have to see what happens in our league of record, Mr. Moore. You've got a look on your face that says you're conniving, you're, you're planning, <laughs> you're plotting. The look on my face is I literally have a... Uh, you forgot about waivers. Uh, I forgot until this morning, <laughs> and then I I'm getting ready for the show, and I make you know I'm like, hey Siri, remind me at 9:30 a.m. to do my waivers. So let's uh, let's wrap this show up, can we? All right, we've got Thursday night preview coming up. We want to thank today's sponsor, guys. It is Fight Camp. Oh, <laughs> that, that, that those are the sound effects I was waiting for. Look, if you're looking for a workout that keeps you engaged, learn, learning, excited, motivated, never boring, you got to check out Fight Camp. Fight Camp brings the boxing gym to your living room. They provide all the gear and top trainers, everything you need for great results. This is actually, I mean, if you know me, my favorite thing to do to work out is to play sports. It is to do something that engages you on a different level than just pain. Get them it's competitive fun. juices yeah, flowing. I know. And they have uh, six highly qualified trainers, ranging from a pro MMA fighter uh, to a kickboxing world champion. And this doesn't matter. If you're new to boxing, they have a whole starting program. This is not something that only experienced boxers uh, are, are, are using. This is something for everybody. And they offer flexible financing for as low as 0% APR and $0 down. Right now, you can uh, you can get a limited time holiday offer, free shipping, and a gift valued up to $109 with every Fight Camp package. Just go to joinfightcamp.com slash footballers. That's right. Free shipping and a gift valued up to $109 with your purchase. Bring an authentic boxing and kickboxing gym into your home with Fight Camp. To get your free gift, just go to joinfightcamp.com slash footballers. Thursday Night Breakdown. Oh, just another boring Thursday night. Oh, brother. Arizona Cardinals, six and three. Taking on the Seahawks up in Seattle, six and three. Oh, boy. 57.5. Holy Over under Toledo 57, 57.5 Seahawks are three point home favorites. And this is a battle for the division lead. This is a battle between two teams littered with fantasy football options on both sides. And uh, I'm, I'm excited. We've got some injury updates. I wanted to mention for this game, Carlos Hyde, full participant in practice. Carson, Chris Carson limited. And Tyler Lockett did not participate on Tuesday, though I am not surprised that that, uh, that doesn't indict his ability to play necessarily, With but his, they're going to need to give him some time. What was what the, the phrase about his knee? A little a bit, little of, a bit of a strain or something like that? A little that. bit of a knee sprain? I don't know. Yeah, I, I would expect him to not get in much practice, if any, uh, as they rest him on a short week. It's just a matter of whether they... A little bit they, sprain, a little bit rain, right? <laughs> Whether or not um, he'll be active, you just got to pay attention Thursday. So uh, battle between two of the best fantasy quarterbacks in the game, you know, Russell Wilson, it's it's not Unlimited. been... Unlimited. Oh, there it is. Thank you, Al. Uh, last 
you know, five games, the numbers have come down for Russell Wilson. Uh, first four games, he had 16 touchdowns, 75% completion percentage, just two interceptions. The last five games, 12 touchdowns, eight picks. So not a ratio that you like to see from your quarterback. He's been, you know, this is a team that when you talk to people up in Seattle, the mindset is, look, Russ can't do everything. And he was doing everything. And he had to do everything to get them these victories to start the year. But the defense, we know the defense has been uh, just horrendous this season. Uh, the last six weeks, they're, you know, they're, they're almost last in every category. They're setting records. And so Russ has to do a lot. And, and some mistakes are catching up. That being said, you're playing Kyler, you're playing Russell Wilson, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, when you've got a game that almost has a 60-point over-under with two mobile quarterbacks, they, they're, you know, it's it's very similar to last week when it was like, well, the biggest question of, you know, which quarterback to start between Josh Allen and Kyler Murray is just who's number one, who's number two. It's how it felt. That's that's this game this week. The first time they played, by the way, in week seven, it was uh, 71 points was, was on the board in that game, 37 to 34. So... Kyler's been outstanding and consistent for fantasy. He is, uh, you know, if you had to say rest of season right now, who do you want at quarterback? It's Kyler oh, Murray, is it not? Has, it has to for be Kyler. Fantasy? Yeah, it's Kyler. The amount of yards he's putting up on the ground, the, and, and more than that, the amount of rushing touchdowns. And if you're not watching these games, when they get around that five-yard line, it it's just impossible for teams to guard every option. Um, when his ability to just leak out with a running back by his side, pick one, and, and you, you can't play them both, and Kyler's too fast. I mean, right, Kyler here. Murray's bust game so far was uh, when he had 133 yards and three touchdowns with uh, 78 rushing yards, and he was the QB 11. That was his, his worst bust game. Yeah. Wow, that's shocking. Uh, running backs, a lot more question marks here on both sides of the ball. Let's start with Arizona. Kenyon Drake came back last week and he saw a lot of work. He had a, he, uh, over 100 yards receiving. Back. Yeah, 16 carries. You know, you say he took his job back. I, I would argue he never lost his job. He just got hurt and and well, came, yeah, yeah. That's that's what I mean. Just of of uh, he was hurt. He was coming back. It was we, we didn't know what to expect between the the timeshare. Are they going to ease him back in? Is Chase Edmonds going to be the guy? And then he came back. Uh, Kenyon Drake came in. And right away, 67% of the running back attempts, which I guess it, that is a little bit lower than what, he, what he's been averaging on the season. On the season, he's more of a 80% of the running back attempts. Uh, so I guess he did seed a little bit of work, but I'm just saying that the if you thought, or we, we thought, and not an if you, we thought you could play Chase Edmonds with, with confidence this past week. And it was, Kenyon Drake was right back to being the, the dominant person in the timeshare. Yeah, and, and he's a he's a player that whether or not you're disappointed in his lack of giant big upside games, you you should be playing him. He's he's had too many opportunities, you know, he's getting 18, 20, 14, 16 carries a game um and when he gets in the end zone, you're really happy. He had, you know, a, back in week 6, he had the two touchdown game and was the running back too. Uh, if he doesn't get in the end zone, then he's probably you know more of an RB two, maybe even an RB three. But I, I think that the volume dictates in a game with this many points projected to be scored, he needs to be in your lineup. But what about Chase Edmonds? Do you really take the risk and put Chase Edmonds in the lineup? High over under, like you said, you know he's going to get targeted, but he's probably not going to get any uh, any work on the ground. Very limited work on the ground. He has to pop one of those off to be valuable there. Would you play Chase Edmonds this week, and would you definitively play Drake over him? I would definitively play Drake over him. Um, that just from uh, known opportunities, I do think you could play Edmonds. Um, ironically, when uh, when Drake went down, you saw the targets go down for Chase Edmonds. If they get back to what they were doing prior to that injury, th that's where Chase Edmonds was getting six targets, seven targets in a game. You get that in a game like this one. I, I think Chase Edmonds is a flex option this week, which, of course, you would put in at your running back position because it's Thursday night football. Yeah, I agree. Chase Edmonds, is he's in play as a flex. But My, Mike, Drake what do you do? The, Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I say that Chase Edmonds is – he's a flex play. I mean, he saw 49% of the snaps. He – uh, this was kind of the, the highest snap share 
with uh, with an act of Kenyon Drake he had seen by a couple points. But it, Jason's right. It comes down to the targets. Do those get back from three to then? Do we get back to the you know five to six range for Chase Edmonds? So yes, you can flex him as as good of a game as Kenyon Drake had on the on the ground with a hundred rushing yards. Kenyon Dra- or uh, uh, Chase Edmonds was actually point two fantasy points behind Kenyon Drake. He was right there with him with the combination of a couple big plays on the ground and the the half point PPR bump. Yeah, it's funny. On the course of the season, Kenyon Drake is the running back 23. Chase Edmonds is the running back 24. So they are right next to each other. What do you do with the Seattle backfield? How do you make a decision there? The, you know, the game is a high over under. You know that both teams are going to be putting up points. And, you know, even when DJ Dallas was super inefficient a couple weeks ago, he scored twice. Yeah, is it Carlos th- Hyde? The, the fact that Carlos Hyde is full practice, he will be the guy that at least – all implications from Pete Carroll over the past couple of weeks have said if Chris Carson if Chris Carson misses and Carlos Hyde is in, Carlos Hyde is the guy. And so it's 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 it seems murky, but to me it's it's a pretty straightforward. If Chris Carson is active, I'm going to play him. If he is out and Carlos Hyde is active, uh, then I'm going to play Carlos Hyde. And I fully expect Carlos Hyde to be active. So either way, you're you're playing Carson or Hyde. I'm not looking at Homer, DJ Dallas, uh, Alex Collins off the street. It's it's back to the back to the main guys for Seattle. Do you agree with that, Jason? I worry a little bit about the ceiling for Carlos Hyde, but if he, do you think he'll be the guy, or will they rotate these other players in? Uh, I think he'll be the the primary guy. Well, I don't think he'll be you know a three down workhorse that me, just doesn't leave the field. But I I do think if he was active, I would he would be the only one in consideration for me to start. Carlos Hyde or Clyde edwards alaire against Las Vegas. Clyde. Yeah, uh, assuming Chris Carson is out. I, That's a Clyde or Hyde question, Mike. Oh, it's it's very nice. Just a reminder. Uh, back when they played Arizona, Carlos Hyde was the running back 11 on the week because Chris Carson went down and Hyde saw 19 opportunities, 15 carries, and four targets. Would you play Hyde or Salvin Ach- Ahmed? Ooh, that's an interesting I would question. go Hyde. I think I would go Hyde there as well, yeah. I, I guess I'm out on Hyde because I would I would definitely play Ahmed in that situation. I, I'm worried about coming back from injury. I think they liked what they saw from Alex Collins. I'm worried about them spelling him too much to have value. So that's a tougher one to come back to. DeAndre Hopkins, yep. DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, you hope that they can both go. Obviously, Metcalf will be out there, but Lockett with the injury. Arizona's given up the most fantasy points to wide receivers over the last month. Uh, so that is trouble, uh, for you. If you're a locket manager and you miss this game, you're just going to be heartbroken because it's, yes, it's, it's yes. set up for success. But what do you do with, uh, Christian Kirk? He's been involved. Uh, he had a couple touchdowns against Seattle in week seven. And this game is one where you expect a lot of passing yardage against a very bad passing defense. Yeah. It's a uh, DK Metcalf. Yeah. DK Metcalf, it was disappointing last week. We we saw that he is in fact not completely Superman. And the so I mean DK Metcalf has had two bad games this year. One against Jalen Ramsey, one against Patrick Peterson. He's going to see Patrick Peterson again, but you're there's no way you are benching DK Metcalf. Yeah, no uh, yeah, you're not. And and I'm not worried about Patrick Peterson. That was one of his bad games. Yeah, all of his know. games are one of his bad games. I mean, Stephon Diggs just lit him up again too. So uh, I'm not worried about Patrick Peterson. Yeah, that, uh, I was going to say he's not he's not what he used to be. I, I was referring to one of DK Metcalf's bad games being against Patrick Peterson. Right, I think right. that was more happenstance than what Patrick Peterson did to lock him down. I, I don't I don't think he can lock down DK Metcalf. You're starting both of them, assuming that Lockett is playing. I mean, Arizona's they're just giving up <laughs> the, the most points to wide receivers. Yeah, these, this is the uh, 30th ranked and 32nd ranked, uh, being Seattle and then Arizona, in terms of fantasy points given up. They give up over 40 fantasy points per game to opposing fantasy wide receiver groups. So this game is set up for uh, just a delightful Thursday night football game. I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a lot of fun. So make sure, like Jason said earlier, you take the Thursday night players out of your flex position, put them into... Uh, your primary positions, running back, wide receiver, in case injury or COVID or anything comes up later in the week and you have injury flexibility. Uh, Jason, I think you need to use the word happenstance more. That was very uh, becoming. 
Thank you. I am uh, wise. <laughs> All right. Uh, we do have starts of the week, taking it to 100, the matchup previews on tomorrow's show. But right now, we're going to get into the mailbag. 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 Ooh. <laughs> Remote. <laughs> All right, if you have a question for the show, we're here to help. Go to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. Click on the Submit a Question button or dial the voicemail hotline, 302-464-TFFB. Let's kick it off with a voicemail question. Uh, it's an interesting one. Hi, it's Anderson from Massachusetts. I'm wondering in a PPR league if I should be starting Ronald Jones or Damian Harris. Thanks. Oh, no. Yeah, That's this a is a really hard question. It's a really, really hard question. <laughs> Uh, in, in full PPR, Damian Harris is, is far less attractive. Mike, you, you brought up some really good points yesterday for once. And, uh, it I was, did it. it was Rex Burkett around the goal line, Cam Newton around the goal line, uh, James White in the passing game. And here's Damian Harris. Who's, who's, you know, chunk plays on the ground, but that can be kind of deceptive for fantasy production. Sometimes if you don't have all those other pieces, um, this is tough. Ronald Jones is the Rams. last week. Does last week matter to you? The fact that they that he made a mistake, that he fumbled, lost the ball, and they kept him in this game because they realized this is the best player at the position. Is that? Do you believe that that's the decision that was made, or was no. was Fournette more banged up than than we know? I I believe that you cannot believe anything out of Tampa Bay. You cannot believe Bruce Arians. At all, I I don't look at last week and go, all right, we did it, we did it in America fantasy football. Ronald Jones, he's back. He's a he's a locked in superstar. Ninety eight yard touchdown. Yeah, it, like that that solves the problem, but it, that will not solve the problem for for Bruce Arians. You could have Jones come out and fumble and be benched immediately. The matchup is much better for for Damian Harris. Uh, he won't get any any little tiny PPR bump. Ronald Jones, you know, should catch a a, a couple passes. Man, uh, Jason, I'm hemming and hawing over here. Yeah, I don't I, know if I have a, I think a, I've a got, definitive answer yet. Yeah, I, I think it's uh, clear. I, I, I think Damian Harris, his floor is actually higher than Ronald Jones. Ronald Jones could end up, like you said, getting Bruce Arians, getting Buccaneered out of this game um, for one reason or the other. But the ceiling... I still think is much higher with Ronald Jones, even in a difficult matchup because of the PPR and the more uh, realistic touchdown opportunities that he might get over uh, Damian Harris being pulled for Rex Burkhead or Cam Newton vulture or whatever. I think that um, even though the floor is a little bit higher, I'm going to take the, the, the higher upside with Ronald Jones. I would pick Rojo here. All right. Yeah, uh, yeah I, can, I can see that for sure. Uh, Twitter question coming in from S. Perry uh, says, what is some advice for the underdogs who are fighting to get into the playoffs? How do we approach the next few weeks? My husband is in first place, and I play him this week. I won't hear the end of it if he wins, <laughs> and I don't make the playoffs. All right. Help. Well, uh, you, you've got to manufacture yeah. wins, um, and obviously, you know, usually that that uh, is really necessary advice. Where we talk about you got to look at your your single matchup that's ahead and do what it takes to win that one. But you're already doing that. If you're if you're worried about this husband marriage bowl, um, it's probably too late to make specific transactions. Like I would, uh, you know, usually for for other people listening. Sometimes you've still got a player who's yet to go on by and you can trade them to your opponent you're going to play that week for someone around equal and that will if you have to win to get in those are some of those type of transactions that you can look at but it, as far as what you're going to do to beat your opponent in you know that the games start tomorrow play your best players do you guys have <laughs> I mean do you guys have specific advice for th how do well, I'd I set up the guest room? <laughs> I mean, just in case things go south, I'd make sure you're set up for the next few weeks. But uh, no, I mean, manufacturing wins is the name of the game at this point in the year. One or two uh, manufactured wins is the difference between getting into the playoffs. And even, you know, we've been doing this for so long in, in so many leagues that 
Look, there's tons of six and seven, seven and six teams that win championships because you just have to get there. And then if your player or players, the schedule lines up, you're able to go on a run. It's title time. So it's a matter of getting there. It's a matter of making week to week decisions. This is the time of year where you start looking at the, you know, the fantasy playoff matchups if you're already in. But if you're not in, you just got to get there. Yeah. And I would say don't be soft in your waivers. Um, you know, you can, you can spend up whatever, whatever it takes to make sure you get the players you need this week. Don't be like, well, I don't want to overspend on the overspend. If you need them, get them and, and look at your, look at your husband's team. Does he need a quarterback? Does he need a defense? Is there a better defense on waivers where it's like, oh, if he wises up, he can pick this person and put him in the lineup. Stop him from doing that. Yeah. And if he leaves his laptop open, you can release some players into the free agency pool. (laughs) That's a uh, pro move. <laughs> and I would say em- embrace th- – this is where you really got to embrace the variance of fantasy football. If you have uh, – with your knowledge and your uh, the history of playing the game, if you have that hunch on a player in a particular week who is like a massive upside this week, go with it. Go go with the player that you want to play. Don't just – don't don't look around at us us goofy talking heads saying no you got to play this player over player Y like go look, with if, Cor- if Cordero Patterson's your guy yeah over Ryan Null you got to go with it's time to shine got to go with Patterson uh you know when you when you brought up players that you might have a hunch on or you starting to fall in love with that type of thing I was thinking about you know our discussion on waiver show about Michael Pittman and his potential breakout yeah. names matter like we're at the we're at the point of the season where names don't matter as much like. Except Michael Pittman versus T. Y. Hilton. Stop playing T. Y. Hilton. Play Michael Pittman. I was I was reflecting last night. I was going through the draft picks at the wide receiver position because we've done this a few times over the years and had these. Do you realize how good the rookie wide receivers are and how many there are? Mm-hmm. I was looking yes. like I mean, Higgins has been unbelievable. Jefferson, yep. Claypool, Lamb, Judy, Rager, Pittman. And then you've seen flashes from other guys like uh, Ayuk and Mooney and Hamler and Chenault and Ruggs and Mims and I, it's just I've never seen if you look at all the wide receivers drafted they're all good and just just wait Brian Edwards any day now. I know any Brian day Edwards now. is the one just sitting just out there Brian like Edwards, gosh, but she's it. standing alone I mean <laughs> got hurt and then his job got taken unbelievable but uh yeah it's it's one of those years where it's 2014 again yeah, and, and what's funny is, you know, in dynasty leagues, those early picks, you know, they're they're generally wide receivers, and you've had people whiff. I mean, the Corey Davis number one pick didn't pan uh, out, and and Nikhil, and, Harry. and Nikhil Harry, and woof, and now it's like, oh my gosh, if you landed a Jefferson, if you landed a Judy, you're looking at a long term future. I I think this is this is something worth noting for for dynasty players. Every year, you're excited about. Um, you know, oh, the next draft class, there's this guy who's good, this guy who's good. But there are certain years, and, and this has happened over the last, you know, however long, you know, six years we've been doing this. There are certain years where you just know 2014's wide receiver draft class was touted as they were going to be unbelievable. Um, the running back draft class in 2017, you kept hearing about it beforehand with all the running backs that were in that class. And before the 2020 draft, we heard that this was supposed to be this massive wide receiver year. They kind of come in chunks like this. And I think the next time you hear, if you're in a rebuild and you're, and we keep, cause I don't know, you know, this next year isn't one of those years. Um, but let's say next year we just keep hearing about 2022. Oh my goodness. The 20, just wait. I would, I would really try to stock up in picks on those really highly touted years because over the last decade, it seems to, it seems to work. By the way, one update for you. Drew Locke is going to try and play this week. So, uh, mm, that's the right. same as last week. He, oh. he failed. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> try harder. Oh, me, oh, my. Oh, me, oh, my. All right, Facebook question from Sean. Half-point PPR, who who would you start? Chase Claypool versus Jacksonville <laughs> or Chris Godwin versus oh, the Rams? Oh, man. That is so funny because you've got this guy who, you know, was a top wide receiver, one of the best last year, high draft capital, or you know the rookie that you know didn't get much attention paid to him, and it's the rookie, right? That that's that's who we would all start this I'm week. I'm playing Chase Claypool. 
I Jacksonville. Yeah, I mean, I, honestly, they're they're very similar from a prognostication standpoint. They both could be the one on the week, and they can both be the three on the week in terms of their wide receiver room. So, uh, you know, you think about early draft picks on wide receivers, and you put Chris Godwin in the Michael Thomas category, injuries, and then not what you got last year out of yeah. him. And really, you you look at the matchups and you say, okay, well, the you know the outlooks are somewhat similar. I would say Godwin is is safer. I I, I you know as far as knowing he's going to get his I targets. I agree. I agree. But Jacksonville is one team's matchup, and the Rams are another team's matchup. I'm going against Jacksonville. Over the over the last three weeks, Chase Claypool is averaging over ten targets a game. Yeah, like the it's. I don't know if uh, he's saying that Chris Godwin is safer than Chase Claypool is, in terms of opportunity. I don't know if that's I, completely accurate. Yeah, I and you're right, Mike. I mean, it's it's tough to break that down. Claypool has had a couple disappearing weeks, and then um, the one thing to think about is where's Ramsey going to line up? He's going to be on the outside. Um, he's probably going to be on Mike Evans, and so I, would I don't think so. I don't know if you're going to see a lot of uh, him inside. So, look, it's it's a pretty tough call. Yeah, it, it Ch is. Chase Claypool since week six, and the and and just for context here, the reason I I'm doing this since week six is because week five was that monstrous week where he was the number one wide receiver. I want to take that out, so it's not in the equation. Week seven is where he completely had a dud game, and in those last five games, including the dud and no big blow up games, Claypool's the wide receiver eighteen. He's been pretty consistent. Two top ten performances two top 36 performances, and then the one dud. So I, I think Claypool can be relied upon right now. Which is crazy because I think yes, Deontay Johnson can be relied upon, and I think that Juju can be relied I, upon. Yep, yeah, I fire up your big bin. <laughs> so it's, uh, yeah, really. I mean, the Did past two weeks. Did you guys see that report? Uh, it was might be a little more tongue-in-cheek, yes. but it talked about how, uh, all right, for the listeners at home, big Ben last week did not practice like he was the on the entire, COVID IR the, he didn't practice the entire week and then the final day of practice he got out there and he threw about 50 passes uh and then had the best game of his year or, or of the year so he went to Mike Tom and was like hey what do you what do you think about replicating that practice system yeah yeah Big Ben does strike me as as uh least practice possible type of, <laughs> of guy all right, uh, here's a question, follow-up from earlier. Chad wants to know, is Clyde Edwards-Alaire still an every-week start, or is he matchup dependent? Uh, is he a flex to you? Mm. Uh, it, you know, what's so funny is we've downgraded Lev Bell. I mean, we've all said that you can drop yes. him. And yet, that has not come with an adjoined, like, confidence bump in Clyde Edwards Alaire it's more well it, they don't need running backs or something to me it was I mean they don't need running backs but it was because you saw it, we've we've seen a couple weeks now of Le'Veon Bell and two weeks ago against Carolina Daryl Williams was running clearly ahead of Lev Bell and the the question for for Lev being released from the Jets coming over to the Chiefs was <clears throat> what does Le'Veon Bell have left he is he his age is up there for a running back, not a human being. And, and when you talk about just work on his actual body, go through college where he was, uh, his college work share is insane. And then you look at what he has done through his pro career. It's possible that his body is doesn't want to play football anymore. And they went with Daryl Williams over Le'Veon Bell. So I, I thought that said a lot about what happened. Meanwhile, Clyde has been disappointing, but over the last four games for Clyde Edwards-Alaire, running back 5, 16, 43 was the dud, and then running back 18 where it was a, it was a massive disappointment in week nine against Carolina, and he was still running back 18. So yeah, he is, he's, he's still an every-week play, but he's a running back too. Yeah, he is an every-week play. He's, he's Lamar Miller in that year when he went over to the Texans, and there was all this hype around him, and we thought he was going to be astronomically good. And he was considered a tr giant draft bust, and he finished as like the running back fifteen or something because, right? You know, he was still actually okay. You know, Clyde Edwards-Helaire on the season is the running back twelve, and he's getting the work. I look at his forthcoming schedule and I say he's an every week starter. He's going to be in my lineup now. If you've got really good options, I would say two weeks from now against Tampa Bay, and then three weeks after that in the playoffs in week fifteen against the Saints. 
Maybe in those weeks you look to pivot, but otherwise he's just a solid, reliable RB2. All right, Trevor wants to know, is it crazy to continue to stash Kittle in the off chance he comes back during fantasy playoffs? Uh, he's referencing a CBS injury report that says expected week 16 return. I mean, that's. are you going to put Kittle off of the uh, injured reserve into your lineup to win a title in week 16? Yeah. I mean, I, I, <laughs> I, I if, if you don't, did. I'm just saying now, this is not saying I'm definitely holding on to Kittle. Uh, we could talk about the nuance of that, but I will I mean, there's no way that when Kittle comes back, if he's in the lineup and the Niners are putting him out there on the field, that I'm not starting him over all the non Travis Kelsey and Darren Waller options. I mean, I'm not gonna, you know, if I've been riding with Hunter Henry. Um, I'm, I'm not going to throw him out ahead of George Kittle if the Niners are saying he's yeah. healthy and we've seen him come back from injury several times and he, he just comes right back to work. Now the question whether they is bring him back is another question, right? right? And, and whether or not you hold on to him, there's, that's a long time to lock up a roster spot. I assume you don't have an IR. If you have an IR, then sure. Hold on to him. It's not really hurting anything. Um, but it's all a matter of context. Do you need to manufacture wins right now? Do you need to block your opponent's waiver wires? Is there a great player that projects great on the waiver? Any of those reasons, then you do not hold on to Kittle. If you're like dumping Kittle to sign your, you know, uh, some guy you just don't need who you don't even really like, then then I'm fine holding on to him. But he's not a must hold. All right. Uh, this is a tough one. I, I was reading it uh, while you were finishing your answer there. Need a high ceiling play. This is from MJ Conway. Jameis Winston against the Falcons or Ryan Tannehill against the Ravens this week. And for context, his opponent has Kyler and Kamara. Oof, so, duh. you know, you play Winston and uh, you hope to cancel out some Kamara, right? At Kamara, three touchdowns last week, only 15 rushing yards. Yeah. I if mean, you play you Tannehill, is there a ceiling there against the Ravens? Uh, that's that's the question. So Mike? the the, the oh, I'm looking at so anybody the over, the over under under for the Baltimore and Tennessee game it's at 49 right now. The Saints Falcons is at 51, uh, but the Titans implied total is 21 points and the Saints are at 28. I mean, I I know Big Ben got it done uh, he, against the Ravens, sort of. <laughs> I, I I'm playing Jameis Winston here. I, I'm 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 gonna go with that, and you just start. If you're hoping that while Cam, you're Camara is gonna do his thing, you're just hoping that the touchdowns go to Michael Thomas and to Jared Cook. Which with Jameis Winston, not knowing exactly what he will do with the Saints, that is more than possible. So I would roll with Winston. Man, the 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 last month of Tannehill has just been so mediocre. The the quarterback, 16, 13, 21, 21. Um, I don't blame him. His schedule, I mean, it's absolute brutality to the quarterback position. And it, it continues the next two weeks. He's played Pittsburgh, Chicago, Indy. Then it's Baltimore and then Indy the following week. That's just not fair to have five wow. or six games be that tough. I will say this, though. If you're looking for a trade target, you, it doesn't cost you much to get Ryan Tannehill right now. I mean, you, he could be on waivers, and if you're if you can hold on to him, you know, once you're past the the indie game in two weeks, Cleveland, Jacksonville, Detroit, and Jacksonville those playoffs. Is the first playoff week, I believe. So, That's pretty nice. Uh, not I bad. Mean, as long as the Yeti doesn't but steal everything away from you. I, yeah, I, I sorry to answer the question. I go Tannehill. Who would you go, Jason? To answer the question, I would go Jameis. I, I okay. think Jameis's upside is higher if that's what you care about. Yeah, you're right about that. I think the upside is there. The downside is is just oh, a, spe yeah. a spectacular car wreck. Um, <laughs> yes. All right. Uh, are there are there realistic trade targets for a dynasty league here? If you're shopping Zeke, what are some targets you would be looking at? Would you? Let me ask you a really tough question. Ezekiel Elliott not exactly leaving a good uh, impression this year for fantasy players. Yeah, bad vibes. Bad vibes. Uh, but. Would you go right now and trade Ezekiel Elliott for DeAndre Swift in a dynasty league? Yes. Ooh. You you're would. that you're that in. You're just, you're you're ready to go, Jason. I, I, DeAndre Let me read Swift. you something, Jason. <sighs> okay, read it, read it. Running back three, running back nine, 
running back 16, running back 13, running back 2. Yeah, those, those are, are the, his those finishes. are the Dak those are the Dak Prescott games. Yeah. No, I I I I totally get it and um I I don't think it's a safe trade to say that this is one of those trades where let's say Swift becomes something special which you know we've we've seen him over the last several like Zeke, weeks if he becomes something like Zeke. Um <laughs> you're not going to be able to trade for him once it's happened. Uh, sure. especially in a dynasty league. So this is one of those you got to call your shot moments. I do think Zeke is more than I I want to pay up for Swift, but I got excited when Andy brought up Swift's name because I think in a dynasty league, it, it might already be too late too late to to grab him uh, for a realistic value. But I think that you know if you want to call your shot on him and grab him, it's going to take something big. What about uh, Clyde Edwards Alaire? Would you trade uh, you know Zeke for the super young rookie, you're Man. gaining a bunch of extra years on the back end on a high-powered offense, even though it's been disappointing in his rookie year. I, I so I have Clyde Edwards-Alaire right now. What I, tr if someone offered me Zeke, would I trade Clyde away? Uh, I think because my team, my and my team is in a rebuild. I'm not going for it this year. I think I'd rather have Clyde. I guess that really defines the whole thing. I was going to ask Al Borland because he has DeAndre Swift. If somebody came and brought an offer of Ezekiel Elliott, I'm guessing you would say no based on your team rebuilding? Correct. Yeah, I'd rather now, have Swift. It's, inter it's interesting you say that, Mike. Uh, because you're rebuilding, you'd rather have Clyde. But I guess that means you're, you, you, you might not think you're going for it next year. Because rest of season, Correct. who would you rather want this year, Zeke or... Clyde. Or Clyde Edwards Alaire. Yeah, I I'd think rather it's have Clyde. Clyde. Yeah. And, and it's because in the the rebuild in a dynasty isn't necessarily a one year. I hope it is next year. <laughs> and I'm I'm going for it. But you have to look at maybe two years out, and in two years, who's gonna be better? Ezekiel Elliott, who has been run into the ground. I know he's on his massive contract, but run into the ground or Clyde Edwards Alaire only in his third year in the NFL. That that's the, the hard part in Dynasty though. Yes. It's not because Clyde could be out of the league. I mean, you, Zeke might not be what he was, but we just don't That's know. Fair. Running backs are much shorter shelf life. Like, I'm not afraid to, uh, like, same question with Dalvin Cook. Mm, I would rather, I would take Dalvin. Okay. Jason? Yeah, Dalvin is is probably the uh, the best or, you know, top three. Dalvin is always going to win. Yeah, I mean, but always until he's not. I mean, it's like right. Todd Gurley a yes. couple of years ago. I was like, it, it's just so hard in Dynasty. The, the the time frames I'm viewing players at the running back position in Dynasty is I'm looking in like a two-year chunk. I'm really not looking beyond that. I'm not looking for the dream of of the one in 50 that, that has a 10-year shelf life at running back position. I'm looking at what's the best two years that I can get. Is it... Is it Dalvin Cook or is it Clyde? Is it Zeke? Is it Clyde? Um, and then obviously the context you guys brought up about are you building for the future? What's your record right now? Uh, but it's it's an interesting question. Running backs are a tough, tough uh, bunch. You can go from having them. I mean, Jason, you're, you're champ champ team. <laughs> I mean, how quickly did your running back room change in, in that league? You have... Uh, I had Todd Gurley and Leonard Fournette, baby. Oh, yeah, win a championship <laughs> with those two. And then all of a sudden, the next year, I tried to trade them in the offseason. I, I saw the writing on the wall, but I was too late. <laughs> they I was ran too late. Into, and now yeah. my running backs on this team that I'm trying to win. Although my, Gurley's, been, Gurley's been fantastic. Yeah, he's, fantasy. he's been okay. He's been certainly a, a pleasant he's surprise. Been, oh, you are of – what are you doing over there? Like, I've, I've taken the L on, run, on Todd Gurley. He's the running back nine. What he's saying is that him and Fournette ran into each other at the Medicare application line. Is what yeah. he's watching the games versus. I mean, the production's been been outstanding. But does any of us think? Oh, that yeah, we want, watch, want Gurley oh. for next year. I mean, does oh, anybody? No. Or, or even for this year? Do you just assume it's going to keep happening where he keeps mm. falling in the end zone? I've not wanted to trade for him. I can tell you that. I've people have offered. You know, they're trying to get rid of him. I'm like, eh, I don't hey, want to put him in there. How uh, Todd Gurley's been the best running back over the last several years. Would you? How's DeAndre DeAndre Swift sound? <laughs> Not gonna happen. Okay. How about DeAndre? I'll, I'll give you both Leonard Fournette and Todd Gurley. 
No, sir. Yeah, he will pass. All right. right. (laughs) That's going to wrap up the mailbag, but we do have more mailbag questions answered later today on jointhefoot.com. Thank you so much for tuning in. And uh, like I said, head head over to jointhefoot.com. Check out the extra episode later today. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.